Hunter Board of Health will come to order. Um, everyone, please rise and join me in pledging allegiance to our flag and to our nation. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, the minutes of the February 18th meeting were distributed uh, with your packets uh, via email. And um, I'll entertain a motion to approve the minutes as submitted. Um, is there a motion? So moved. Thank you. A second? Okay. Motion has been uh, made and seconded. Any uh, corrections, additions, deletions to the minutes as submitted? Hearing none, um, all those in favor of approving the minutes as submitted say aye. 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 Any contraries? The minutes are approved as submitted. Um, <clears throat> I have a few brief announcements um, and uh, then we'll get to the report from our township manager, Robert Sinskowski, um, regarding the uh, deer culling program. But just a few brief announcements. Um, next week, April 1st through April 7th, not, I guess not next week, in two weeks, uh, April 1st through April 7th um, is National Public Health Week. And uh, that's a national observance of all of the good things that uh, public health um, and public health practitioners do uh, in this country. Um, the other announcement is that uh, shingle, free shingles vaccine continues to be available um, at the Delaware County State Health Center for uninsured or underinsured adults who are 60 years old and older. Um, you can call for an appointment at 610-447-3250. And the location is the Delaware County State Health Center at 151 West 5th Street, Chester, PA, 19013. And again, that telephone number is 610-447-3250 for free shingles vaccine. Um, <clears throat> the um, Delaware County is uh, continuing with a program that has been uh, conducted previously um, on several loca uh, uh, at several times in the past um, and has been in Radnor Township. Um, it's a take back day where you can help reduce the supply of prescription drugs that are no longer uh, uh, used or expired. Uh, you can bring them in for safe disposal so that uh, they are not available to those who might steal, abuse, or, or sell them. Um, there is a um, list of uh, drop-off locations throughout Delaware County. The date is Saturday, April 27th, uh, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Um, I'm sure that Radnor Township will again be participating, but I just don't have a location yet. But um, you can get information by visiting um, the um, uh, www.dea.gov. That's www.dea.gov. Um, similarly, um, Delaware County has um, been working with Independence Blue Cross. They have a wellness van. It's been touring the county um, in different townships. It will be in Upper Darby uh, this week and in April in Glen Olden. Um, the plans are that it will uh, be in Radnor Township at some point in the future. Um, we don't have a date 
um, for that yet, but or a location. But as soon as we do, um, the township will provide some advertising with regard to that. Um, <clears throat> So uh, please look for that. Any questions about any of those? Um, hearing none, um, Mr. Zinkowski, uh, will you please, uh, Mr. Zinkowski is here, township manager. He's going to provide us with an overview of the deer culling program in Radnor Township. Okay. Mr. Zinkowski. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, board, for being here this evening. Um, the program uh, which the uh, board has approved, Board of Commissioners approved, um, has done, in my opinion, very well in the time that we've been able to uh, implement this program. Um, Sergeant Joe Pinto and Bill Gallagher from the uh, police department have done an outstanding job of coordinating the efforts, uh, coordination with the USDA, private land uh, holders as well here in the township, and uh, it's been remarkable of how well they've done. Uh, during this process, we thought we'd probably have a lot more concerns or complaints. Uh, the first night I was able to be out there observing the USDA of how they handled this, and it was very professional the way it was done. Um, some of the concerns, too, were being in such tight neighborhoods and tight areas, uh, the concern of um, the safety of the residents and the public uh, at large. Uh, and it was very clear that they would not take shots if there was ever any risk of safety. Um, there are many deer that were left uh, that they did not take a shot at because they thought that it was not as safe for them to be able to do that. Um, so, so far we've uh, completed 10 nights with the USDA. Uh, total number of deer removed have totaled 225 that have been harvested here in the township. Um, the operation began typically around 9.30 p.m. and went till 5 a.m. Uh, in which they were um, taken care of by the USDA. Um, the care that they had taken with that to make sure it was processed, it was all documented and tagged. Each, each deer um, had to be done. It was interesting, the night that I was there, uh, they were making notations that some of the deer were in, had health concerns because they were hit by vehicles and they had continued on. So those were special notes that they were making to the Pennsylvania Game Commission. Um, out of the 225 that um, have been uh, removed, 183 of those were adult does and fawns. Uh, and 42 adult bucks. Um, all 225 deer were donated to charitable food distributions with 141 going to the Central PA Food Bank and 84 were donated to other individuals and charitable organizations in southeastern Pennsylvania. Approximately 6,100 pounds of venison had been donated from the 225 deer from Radnor Township. Um, They'll continue again to work with private property owners. I know we've gotten a lot of calls from private property owners asking to participate in the program, uh, primarily due to the uh, damage that is being done to their properties uh, as well. Uh, one thing of note, and I got this information this afternoon from the police department, uh, last year from January 1st to March 18th, there were 32 incidents involving deer uh, with seven that were unfounded. Uh, this year during the same time period, uh, there were 23 incidents and six unfounded. And the, at least three of those were uh, possible poachers uh, in which the deer struck vehicle. Uh, we also used a uh, private uh, hunting club as well, and they removed 64 deer um, from the township as well. So there's a total of 289 uh, deer that had been removed uh, during this program. I'll take any questions that you may have. I think you mentioned that um, 10 nights have been covered so far. Mm -hmm. Are there more planned this spring? Uh, I believe there are two more dates uh, that are available. Uh, I know that uh, the township had a, uh, we were going to be very pleased if we were able to hit a target of 200. Uh, we had went to the Pennsylvania Game Commission for an additional 50, which were granted, so we're at 225. Um, so there are two, two more nights remaining. Uh, we are in communication with the Game Commission to see if whether or not that could be extended uh, as well, given some of these additional locations that some of the residents here have called in for. Um, during this time period, and I might have mentioned, we only received one complaint during that process, and it was because of the hearing of the gunshots. Uh, and we responded how the process was going to be set up. As a call came in, we were going to respond, one of our police officers, to the, to the home to explain what was going on. And the response we had from the one home, homeowner that called that said, uh, explained what it was, and they were basically responding by saying, thank God you're doing it. So. But that's all we have had, and I believe it's because of the professional efforts of how this was done. 
uh, how they really did a, an outstanding job and very impressive of how they were concerned with the public safety as well. Thank you. Are there any other questions for Mr. Zinkowski? Thank you again for taking the time to uh, brief us on, on this important activity. Uh, I know that uh, this board has, uh, and particularly Dr. Lynn Donato, uh, has spent some time in working with uh, the township and the commissioners with regard to um, signage and other things that we can do to reduce the possibility of accidents involving uh, deer so and, and lighting, which those are things that can help as well. And that, that's a continuing process that we're going to expand to. I thought there were, during the public conversations we had heading up to this, uh, as well as Dr. Donato, your input too as well, this is something that's an ongoing process, even to the education components, the type of plants that should be used, those types of items. So it's an ongoing program with, this just isn't the catch-all, save-all as a part of the programs. There's a big educational component to this as well. And when this program is complete, I'll come back and make another report to the board if you'd like. And then we can detail then to some of the other initiatives that we'll be taking uh, throughout the summer months as well. Uh, certainly, you're most more than welcome to come back. And in fact, uh, I'll extend that invitation now. Um, but you, you said when the program is complete, is there any thought that this might be an ongoing? Uh, I mean, the deer will continue to reproduce. Uh, and if we stop doing it, um, then the problem will get back to the levels before. Uh, from the administration's perspective, we'll, we will make a recommendation to the Board of Commissioners. They'll determine if this is an ongoing program. But based on the success that we have had with this program and the professional way in which this has been handled and knowing some of the, the USDA of other communities they've worked in, this has got to be an ongoing program. Uh, again, cost is always a concern of this type of program and, again, engaging the private clubs, which have done an excellent job for the township as well. So that's something that we'll be making a recommendation uh, to the Board of Commissioners as well uh, for continuing uh, the program. And ultimately, it is their decision then of how we will go forward. Thank you. Sure. We'll move on to um, the report from uh, Mr. Larry Taltone, the health officer for Radnor Township. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman, board members. Um, my report um, of March the um, 2013 is um, for the month of February, we did 21 food safety inspections, seven bathing places. Myself and another inspector did 72 rental housing. Um, that number seems a little high. Um, I need you to keep in mind that that's a multifamily unit where you don't have the out exterior um, structures and components, roof leaders, those type of things that would take additional time. So that number for normal single family or uh, dwelling would be less. Um, we did five meetings, one of which was um, related to the PICO, uh, a PICO um, meeting where we had one of our uh, food facilities that was using electricity that they weren't entitled to, um, including district court hearings, um, we have some other new restaurants coming into the township. We have a new one that just took over, Rural Cafe on the West Avenue. Um, we have a few now mobile food vendors that the Radnor Corporate Center has uh, has an arrangement with for them to come in on Fridays as a special treat to their employees, sort of a perk, and primarily that's the only place that they go. Um, As Mr. Hazen mentioned, the Delaware County hazardous, household hazardous waste collection will be taking place. I haven't heard yet, but I'm, I'm fairly certain that the township will be one of those drop-offs locations. But when I find out for sure, I will make sure that that information is on our website. Um, it has been in every one of the collections. Um, we have been one of the sites. so I feel very confident that we will continue to do so. Um, the shingles vaccine, as Mr. Hazen also uh, mentioned, um, you can still get those shingles vaccines in the Pennsylvania Department of Health Office in Chester. Um,
and there was one other thing that, oh, the Delaware County Council still has available free the true script free discount prescription cards. I think that's important because we do have some senior citizens in the townships that pay a lot of money for their prescriptions. And this card will help them um, a lot as far as getting a reduced rate as far as their um, prescriptions. We have some of the card, these cards here. I've asked the, the county to send me another uh, batch of them so that we'll have more available. Um, for our residents to be able to get their prescriptions at a discount. Um, Mr. Chairman, board, so is my report. Thank you, Mr. Taltone. Any questions for Mr. Taltone based on his report? Hearing none, we'll move on then um, to old business. Um, and uh, I don't know. Um, I'm going to just exercise the prerogative of the chair and skip around on some of these things. Um, uh, Mr. Kane is here. Kevin Kane is the Radnor Township School District um, liaison to this board. Um, and I just want to put some closure on my understanding of the status of the um, uh, what I've been calling the Radnor Youth Risk Behavior Survey, although I think the acronym is somewhat different. This is a biannual, biannual survey of students in the high school and the middle school, which covers um, risk-taking behaviors like uh, taking drugs, um, engaging in sexual activity, uh, maybe carrying weapons to school, um, being involved in, in fighting and that sort of thing. Um, my understanding is due to um, some other issues involving time, basically, um, the uh, school district will not be conducting the survey this year, which would be the year. Is that correct, Mr. Kane? Uh, yes, that's correct. Thank you. Uh, is there any chance that uh, this will... Um, I mean, will be reinstituted uh, for 2015. Or to, I imagine there's some interest in keeping on the same cycle as this U.S. Centers for Disease Control National Youth Risk Behavior Survey. Our last involvement with that, uh, the Pennsylvania Annual Youth Survey, uh, was in 2011. It was in the fall of 2011. We got the results in January 2013. So the results don't come quickly from the uh, survey. Uh, and the survey, when we participated, it was underwritten by uh, the Delaware County, uh, a department in the Delaware County uh, Children and Youth, I believe. Uh, so it didn't incur a cost to the district. Uh, so we'd be willing to consider a scenario like that again in the future. Uh, but knowing that the turnaround was so long, uh, the value of the information is somewhat dated. So yeah, right now, uh, if the county uh, receives a grant again to participate, uh, we would consider participation. Well, I, th I think I'd like to offer to, uh, and any other members of this board who would like to join me, to work with the district um, because I think there's an opportunity to, um, to perhaps join in with the um, with the Centers for Disease Control, which uh, um, the which does this survey biannually. Um, and I know the Philadelphia School District participates in that, and they've had the results of the 2011 survey longer than you've indicated um, that Radnor was able to have them. Um, and they are participating again this year. So while the entire Commonwealth doesn't participate in the CDC survey, I don't think there's any barrier to any individual school district opting in. The survey we participated with wasn't a CDC survey. And uh, at, this year, we, uh, through, through June 2013, we have no intention of doing any further surveys. Yeah, I understand that 2013 is, is finished as far as the CDC is concerned. 
Um, and I understand that the Radnor Township School District did not participate in the CDC survey. What I'm suggesting is that we can perhaps look at whether there's an opportunity to do that in 2015 um, and, and, and bypass any additional cost to the district by doing so. We're always willing to consider. Ex excuse me. Uh, I think it's very important that something that took so long to institute in the school district and once something is let go from a district, it's gone. I mean, to bring it back, it'll be very difficult. So whatever we need to do as a Board of Health t to get the data, the raw data necessary so that we can have these programs for our young people, orchestrate the health curriculum around what is truly their need would be in the best interest of our children, which is our greatest natural resource. So I do hope that we can, in fact, work with the new administration and get this rolling again. And as an aside, you'll, I believe you saw in the notes from Mrs. Purnell, all of you, that we did receive the results late due to a state computer glitch. Um, so for whatever reason, but they have had coffee and conversations regarding the results. So something is being done and I will get to that at a, a later time. So that it's not just a survey. Good stuff is coming out of the buildings. Thank you. I mean, I would support the idea of seeing how to participate with the CDC, seeing if we can do it in a way that doesn't incur a cost for the district. I mean, obviously, everyone would like the information um, I'm sure the school would like the information as well. It's just a matter of, you know, making it happen. And I think, you know, all of us are certainly sympathetic to the uh, districts and the students, you know, feeling that they're just surveyed and tested and whatever, whatever. I, th I think this is important to know what the true health uh, concerns and needs of the students are, as, as you say, for the health curriculum. I think for all the teachers to know not not just the health teachers um, and you know especially regarding you know the mental health needs I mean everyone's supposed to be kind of uh, you know particularly sensitive and alert to um, psychological needs of the students and these data certainly relate to that so in order to be able to do the best job and, you know, I mean, I think as a Board of Health, obviously, we want to orient our work towards, um, you know, what's needed as well. So I think for all concerned, you know, everyone wants the information. It's just the logistics of making it happen in as least disruptive and least expensive way as possible. But I don't know that anyone would disagree with wanting to, you know, move ahead with it. Thank you. <clears throat> Any other comments on that? Um, the sugary drinks posters, uh, Dr. Leader, are now fairly well distributed around the township. I did a cursory look out in the lobby out here. Um, I didn't see one in, in an immediate view in this building, and I thought we were going to have one here. Um, we did not bring any in here, but we can. We were focusing more on places out and about, but we certainly, I can get some over here. And we have extras. If anyone has good ideas, places you can think of, between Alexa and I, we will um, hit anything you can think of. And I have extras if you need them. And we'll bring some to the township. Too. Yeah, uh, I, I guess Mr. Taltone would be the best recipient for that. And yeah, if you get them to me, I'll get them up. Okay. Good. Thank how many? You. How many would you like for this building? What's a, what's a good number? I'm not sure the best place to put them. I would probably need your suggestion. Um, well, how many floors are there? There's there are three? Three. Two really active. <laughs> well, at least two then. Um, if not, th I would say okay. three, and you'll just have a spare if you can't get it on the third okay. floor. Okay, I'll bring them to you this week. Okay. I'll come and get them. Let me know. Thank you. 
Is there any place where there are vending machines in the building? Now we have one uh, soda pop machine downstairs. That's so it would be good to put one there. Yeah. It's in the police department. And they uh, are all around Radnor Middle School. And Claudia, did you get them around the high school? Yes, I put them in every wing, so, so we're covered. Thank you. And um, Ms. Schaefer, the uh, president of the uh, Board of Commissioners, indicated that she was going to see that one got put up in the library. Um, so we're covered in that public building as well. And Gail Wright from um, Mainline Health um, Community Outreach mentioned that she had gotten them and gotten the file and was very happy to be helping distribute them. Good. Um, Just one thing, I know Dr. Foreman, your practice is not within the township, right? But we, we might want you to have one anyway since you're on the board. Uh, Ms. Wishner, you uh, had indicated in an email that you wanted to talk about school lunches and snacks and a conversation you'd had. Right, I, I love talking about school lunches and school snacks. So I had a really great uh, phone conversation with Barb Nissel, and, um, who's a, a food service consultant to the district um, and has been at Radnor for 10 years. And she had a number of interesting things to say. She also sent me photographic evidence which I shared with my kid of the existence of fresh fruits and vegetables in the high school um, cafeteria um, and um, so there were some some things I was not aware of uh, maybe that I, that I thought were interesting uh, one is um, I think we're all aware there are new school lunch guidelines and because of the um, uh, Barb Nissel is apparently on various national boards and she's a mover and shaker so she's been aware of this so the school actually has been working on this for four years um, to meet these in advance of um, their full implementation and because uh, the township um, has met all these requirements we get an extra six cents per meal um, so you know kudos to her for and the rest of the cafeteria staff for making this happen so this includes servings uh, you know portion sizes calorie counts uh, fat no trans fat at all um, different colors of foods um, and uh, she did mention that the one area of resistance from kids in particular has been to beans so they've been working on some creative recipes, three bean salad, chickpea and tomato salad, and hummus, which are apparently better received. Um, I, I asked about you know the whole grains and pizza, and she said they have distributed the guidelines to all the um, you know any local source of pizza and the national chains that are interested in providing pizza to the school. So they are already doing this, and. Um, Oh, this thing about meeting these requirements, um, only 20% of the districts in the state have met them, so we're doing well with that. In terms of some of the things we talked about, about farm to school and being able to take donations from farms, everything has to be certified, GAP certified, so it's actually not that easy for the school district to accept, um, you know, small amounts of produce and and they can't accept anything that is not certified um, they buy the, their produce from american beauty in westchester which in general has a policy of trying to buy everything within a hundred miles um, but all farmers providing food to our district have to be certified that is not some school districts don't have this requirement, but Radnor does. So even for anything like tastings, like I remember my kids were younger, as part of teaching statistics, they did these trying all different apples and kids voting on you know, which apple they liked the best and then figuring out percentages and doing bar graphs, et cetera. So even for anything like that, um, they, uh, they have to all come from certified um, farmers. There is a um, herb, um, they grow some herbs at the high school in the greenhouse 
she mentioned that Great Valley has a one acre plot where they grow their own vegetables. So, you know, there is, that's not something that we do in Radnor, but I mean, there is that kind of activity going on. But um, the um, one thing that she said they need help with is taste testing. She said that kids need to taste something um, at least six times before they'll accept it. I'd say with my kids, it might even be more than that, but um, so, you know, they don't have extra staff to go around and do that. So that is something that if, you know, people were interested or the public is interested in helping, this is a specific way that they could help. Um, she also mentioned that kids, of course, can go buy lunch elsewhere with open campus program from the high school. So, you know, even if the high school is providing nutritious, whole grain, you know, et cetera, um, kids can go. I won't mention any names where they can go, but they can certainly buy plenty of uh, other food elsewhere. Um, and they're trying uh, to change the uh, whole eating environment from an institutional to a more inviting environment. So they are going to be doing some things. I don't know if those of you who haven't seen the high school cafeteria, I would certainly use the term institutional to describe it. And so they are going to be doing some decor and changes to try and, you know, just make it better. Um, one uh, thing that she mentioned just is not particularly up for consideration, but is just something she said has had some good success in other places. I did mention the thing about how kids eat so quickly. And she said um, one change, you know, can be having recess first and that that's something you know, she personally would like to see, because when you have recess first, then kids aren't rushing through their lunch to get out to recess in the younger grades and sort of setting up um, that, you know, shoveling the food in as quickly as possible to get out to recess. So, um, you know, I mean, she's very impressive, extremely knowledgeable person. And, um, you know, some of the things I think we had thought about, like the farm to school, not really possible given the, you know, I mean, it's, you know, everything's always a trade off. So Renner's going for a certain consistency. And, uh, you know, obviously everyone's very concerned about food safety. So they're sort of going in that uh, direction. Um, obviously, if you get something donated food from people's gardens, you don't have that same assurance of uh, the way foods have been handled and grown. So, um, that is my report. Amy, a quick question for you. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if this was brought up at all, but the um, elementary schools have an electronic system for the children to purchase lunches. Um, all other, of them do. All of them do. Yeah. Other districts actually have uh, a system in place where you can actually check to see what your children have bought for lunch. Right. And you can do Renner, that. Uh -huh. Renner has that. Does uh -huh. Ethan have that too? Yeah. It's part of it because okay. it's, it's not a Radnor. Didn't know that. It's a Redner, It's not a Redner specific system. It's some kind of national thing. I forget the name of the company. So you, the, what they scan for their lunch can be yes. checked online. You could actually find that. Then. Yeah. You might not put money know, on it but before, but I haven't uh, <laughs> seen what they're buying. Uh, while we're on team, if issues, would you like me, uh, me to report on the ask meeting? Sure. I just want to ask a question. Um, with regard to the um, positioning of recess before lunch, and this is an issue that I, I know we've all talked about either here or in other uh, fora, that um, <clears throat> kids need a, an opportunity to wash their hands before eating. Um, and that might be especially important if they moved to having recess beforehand. Is that going to be doable? There, there's no talk in Radnor Township of moving recess to before lunch. This was just something that she was saying, because I asked about among the issues we discussed was this issue of kids being kind of programmed in the early grades to eat ridiculously quickly. And then it's very hard to get them to slow down. Um, and she was just saying that is one thing. So, I mean, that could be something that we say we're interested in, but it's not under any radar screen in the township currently. But I, I thought it was interesting. 
I have a question on the elementary school. My kids are in elementary school in the district, and I do get a chance to see what they order. And it's uh, by the time they've ordered it, and I've checked it online, it's sometimes it's just cereal for lunch. Um, did she mention if um, they monitor at all what the kids are eating and take a look at the choices that some of the kids are making and using that data in any way to help guide nutrition classes? She did not discuss that. I mean, I think for every parent who wants that, there'd be Radnor parents who would be all up in arms about, you know, the net, you know, stay out of my kids' business. I mean, I may, so I don't, I think that would get into some whole other issue. I mean, I, per, so I, I'm not talking about not something yeah, that they I, do currently. You mean as a group? As so, a group, yeah. as a group, if there was any kind of benefit from looking at the, you know, the, the school as a whole. I didn't ask that, so I don't know the answer to it. It's a, I can certainly email her and ask it. It's a good question. Any further questions on Ms. Wishner's report? Um, okay, Ms. McCarthy is uh, this board's uh, representative to the Alliance for Safe Kids, which had a meeting that you were able to attend. Thank you. Yes, I did attend, and Claudia was with me as well, our Board of Health intern, and she was um, very busy taking notes. And in front of you, you have the draft of the notes that I took notes, she took notes, and she, by the next day, had them put together. So respectful of your time, I won't reread it to you, but I will say that there is uh, great communication. Uh, Lieutenant Block, held a, a, basically a conversation, 39, 40 people attended, discussing the lingo that's being used so that parents are knowledgeable as to what words are being used, what drugs are being used, um, et cetera. And the number is rising. And he's, he's thrilled and, and quite a gift to our township. Um, he has a cheat sheet packet of information with drinking laws and consequences, and he um, was discussing that uh, that evening, and he has given that to uh, com a draft to Commissioner Schaefer, and if it's approved, it'll be on the websites of Reach and Ask. Um, the police department, it's tentative, um, but it is April 27th, the National Drug Take Back Day, and he does believe, but could not confirm it as of yet, um, the exact uh, location. But he did graciously tell us, and Claudia, you're welcome to correct me if I'm wrong on any of this. Um, anytime you have any drug in your home that you want to get rid of, you do not have to wait for this National Take Back Day that you could bring it to the police station and they would secure it until this day arrives. His big concern was the high rise in prescription use. Um, so drugs do need to be out of the homes. Um, the exciting part, and I hope some of you can attend, there's a speak up series that sounded really quite interesting, didn't it, Claudia? Um, starts this Thursday and it's listening first and it's really a, um, it's at seven o'clock at the high school it's a series of presentations and what they're going to talk about obviously is so teens and adults learn to listen to one another um, success is another one honoring independence you know, do you want to control your child or do you want them to be independent and a healthy independent? Self-care, modeling, and coping, and uh, there was some interesting comments about that that I'll hold back on. But we, as parents, for the record, do need to role model. And um, we also discussed the uh, new report that came out that even if you have Bluetooth in your car, while texting is obviously seriously dangerous. Even talking on the phone, if you have Bluetooth, is a distraction. So, and you have these young drivers. So we're discussing how to keep these children, and us, by the way, healthy. 
and healthier. So it, and it's not the same as having a conversation with someone in the car with you. That's different because then if you both saw someone slam on the brakes, obviously, the, you know, did you ever ride with your kid? You put the brake on for them. Um, but when they're on the phone and or doing whatever they're doing. So it was a very productive meeting. It was very long. Poor Claudia missed her lunch. Um, and I do hope she ate that day. But uh, that was my, um, she had to go eat first. But I think this is going to be great. And I think the series, so I hope the township, um, our parents and everyone goes to these Thursday nights at the high school. So the dates are this Thursday, the 21st, April 4th, April 25th, and May 9th. Thank you. Now, I noticed uh, that in part of your report is the um, uh, question with regard to the program that asks sponsored in, um, in alliance with this board and the Radnor High School Scholarship Fund Board, um, the transitioning kids to college. Um, and a, um, a DVD was made of that, and uh, actually I, I donated that stuff to the scholarship fund board, um, bought the DVDs, and Mr. Doling made copies of the program, and we gave them to recipients of the scholarships. Um, there were um, a couple of dozen of them last year. At any rate, the, uh, my understanding, and, and Mr. Doling may pop out and, and confirm that one way or another, is that that program is still available on um, Radnor Township's website um, so that uh, people can um, look at it. It's like the deus ex machina. There he is. Yes, it is available on Radnor Township's website. Um, and it is a good program. The only problem is that um, you need to, at some point, uh, devote two hours to it, which obviously doesn't have to be two straight hours if you uh, tune in via the website. Um, it is a long program, but it is a very, there are presentations from Penn, Villanova, Temple, um, uh, I believe Westchester, Penn State, uh, people from those campuses um, talking about the things that they offer new students to help them transition. And a couple of uh, uh, folks who were at that point recent Radnor High School graduates talked about their experiences uh, at their colleges. So it was a good program. I, um, I made a DVD available and uh, sat our daughter down before she went off to college, and I, I think it's helped her. Uh, and I would recommend that anyone, again, on Radnor Township's website tune into that program. Yes, that was discussed. Mr. Lewis was there in, uh, to represent the Radnor Scholarship. And we did discuss that, uh, transitioning kids to college and discussing actually should it be edited and given out. So that discussion did begin and um, they were talking about how the transition can lead to depression and the emotional issues and the social issues of college, et cetera. So lots of great talk and mm -hmm. really committed people. It was very exciting. Uh, so I'm looking forward to uh, representing the board and working with these people. Thank and, you. And we look forward to your future reports. Thank you. I, I, I want to move on. My understanding is I that. One, I have one other thing I want to ask. About that? Um, yeah, but well, we need to be mindful of the time. Um, in uh, Mr. Nagel will confirm this uh, in about three quarters of an hour. The uh, Bradner Township Commissioners are meeting in this room, so we no. Need the meeting doesn't start till seven. Oh, it starts at seven. Yeah, I was told six thirty. Thank yeah. you. Now I'll, I'm going to have to step out in five minutes because we're having an exact. Okay. Um, you want to? Can you make your comment? Um, I know one of the drugs being abused are drugs for ADHD for kids who don't have ADHD but who want to improve their test taking. And I guess I was just curious, Dr. Foreman, do you feel like you have, uh, you know, either parents or kids coming to you to that and you can tell they don't really have this issue but this is what they're trying to get the drug for? Um, or not so much do you think most of it is just kids who truly have it, 
you know. Uh, Nationally, that's a problem. That there's a lot of people who take the medication that don't need it or, requ or request the medication that don't need it. And it's also, you know, an abused drug as well, you know, purchased and sold for illicit purposes. The uh, long acting formulations are harder to abuse. It doesn't become as much of an issue with the longer acting medications. And, you know, recent, uh, there's a recent uh, statement by the National, I think it's uh, the, one of the neurology um, certification boards, um, where we're doing, uh, trying to do a much better job screening the kids truly for ADHD, rather than prescribing medications. It's been shown in many studies that it does affect the brain, it does change the mind, and it shouldn't be prescribed to people who don't require the medication. So, Do you feel like, though, you have kids who come who you feel like, okay, <clears throat> they have it down, what they're supposed to report in yes. order to get this drug? Sure, absolutely. You get that a lot. You get a lot of kids who come in and say, you know, I tried my friend Jimmy's meds and it worked great for me. I need it. And that's not the diagnosis. Okay, anything else on that matter? Um, <clears throat> while Mr. Nagel is still here, um, uh, over two years ago, this uh, board submitted a um, proposed, uh, submitted proposed revisions to the township's chapter 115, the animal control ordinance. Um, and that's on the agenda. I think two months ago, the commissioners uh, discussed it um, and uh, it hasn't yet been voted on, but um, Mr. Two Nagel, months ago, we tabled it. You tabled it. And then I sent you some comments. I understand that Elaine Schaefer met with you. Yes. So hopefully it'll be on the agenda in April. Yes. Okay. And, and uh, since we've, we've opened that issue, uh, I just want to indicate to um, the other members of the board, as uh, Mr. Nagel has just uh, indicated, I did have an opportunity to sit down with the commissioners, uh, Board of Commissioners President uh, Lane Schaefer to um, talk about <clears throat> um, Chapter 115. And uh, uh, one of the principal concerns that, um, that she had, um, and she expressed it at, at that meeting, was with regard to, um, in our submission of the proposed revisions, um, we had indicated that um, as well as dogs, cats should be licensed. Cats owned by residents of Radnor Township should be licensed. Um, currently, there's a licensure requirement for uh, dogs. Now, the thing with um, that is that Radnor Township does not, in fact, administer um, the uh, licensure requirement for dogs um, owned by residents of Radnor Township. That's a Delaware County uh, requirement, and the county uh, administers the whole program, um, including the collection of whatever fees are in order and issuing the license, et cetera, et cetera, and presumably maintaining some sort of record. Um, <clears throat> And uh, Ms. Schaefer suggested um, that uh, uh, since Delaware County, um, and I was not fully aware of this, Delaware County does not currently have a licensure requirement for cats, that um, any licensure requirement for cats um, that would um, be enacted by the commissioners would necessarily fall on the township to administer. Um, and that that could be a stumbling block uh, for the proposed revisions. Um, there might be a, a way to deal with this by um, by doing uh, by changing our proposed revisions to indicate that uh, licensure requirements for dogs and cats owned by residents of Radnor Township shall at all times conform at a minimum with such requirements as promulgated by Delaware County. So current, if that were part of um, the proposed revisions to Chapter 115, what that would mean is that basically for dogs, things would continue. For cats, they would also continue until if and when, if ever, uh, Delaware County were to enact um, a requirement for licensure for cats 
or if some future Board of Commissioners uh, decided to enact a more stringent requirement than the rest of the county, um, then uh, the Board of Commissioners of Radnor Township could do that. Um, so I'll put that out there as a uh, suggestion. Uh, uh, we, can, uh, we can agree by consensus, but before you leave, uh, Mr. Nagel, I, I invite you to comment. Well, just that if anybody wants to talk about it further, please get in touch with me. But also, making that change does not eliminate the requirement that we have for vaccination of cats, which is the real health issue that under, was underlying all of these discussions. So if, for example, Larry would have to go out because of an issue with a cat, one of the things he would check was for that, was that cat vaccinated. And if it was not, then they would be in violation of the ordinance. Um, as you have written it, it also addresses feral cats in that if someone is feeding the cat, they have assumed ownership of the cat and as such are responsible to get, make sure that cat is vaccinated. So I think the, the real core of what you worked on is preserved. That, that would be my, my observation as well. Any further comments on, on that? Um, I don't know, does, do we want to adopt that uh, paragraph by consensus or? Well, why don't we get you a revision and we'll disturb by email. I, I, I don't like people asking people to approve something they haven't seen. I, I'll, if I may speak, I, I agree. I think that really this has been presented to the commissioners and we've come to sort of a consensus here that you're the holders of what we presented and it would be probably best up to you maybe vis-a-vis -vis Mr. Rice to write the appropriate language. Right. I think though, you know, I, don't, I don't know whether it goes from us to you or that, that proposed revision or for, certainly I'm, I'm not asking you to approve anything. I'm asking this board to approve. Oh, I so, agree. So, uh, I something. Agree. Um, but wh whichever way it goes, I think it's safe for me to say that the consensus of this board is that um, we would concur with that revision, as I've stated. That, that revision's a non-public health issue, so that's more just wording. I think that's all we were trying to say was it's a little bit of wording that could be maneuvered around to comply with what Delaware County does. Well, certainly before we have it back in front of us, I'll make sure you see the revision that addresses the discussions you had with uh, Ms. Schaefer. Thank you. Uh, make two other comments before I depart. One, um, one of the things we don't always talk about with drug take back, we only think of the issues with uh, misuse of the drugs, but is also improper disposal of drugs. We are now finding high levels of tranquilizers, hormones, and these things in drinking water in every municipality in the United States. So that's another very significant reason why we have drug take back. And also, as far as the DEER program, uh, my discussions with Sergeant Pinto indicate that every DEER taken was taken with one shot. So that that gives you an idea of the professionalism of these hunters. Also, the fact that they're not going to take shots unless they know they're going to hit. So they'll, they'll pass up a shot if they're not 100% certain, which is very important to our community because we don't need any excess lead flying around out there. Thank you. Thank you. Um, the last thing on, um, unless there are other additions on old business, is um, the future programming for Radnor Health Matters, and I know that Amy Wishner was working on trying to do a program on emergency preparedness. Do you have an update for us? Uh, yeah, so I have the um, Delaware County uh, Director of Emergency Services and the Medical Reserve Corps, um, Edwin Klein, has agreed to be a speaker, and um, uh, the person who's in charge of um, the whole southeast region of work with uh, people with functional needs. So that can be anyone on assistive technology, any kind of assistive device, you know, so it could be dependent on equipment that requires power. 
It could mean anyone who's in a wheelchair. It could mean anyone who has any kind of communications um, uh, issue. Uh, could be mental health issues. So it's a pretty broad category, any kind of functional need. Um, so that's Robin Slater. So the two of them, I just need now to coordinate with um, Mr. Dooling um, the uh, timing of taping. But so we got the pieces ready to go. So should be good. And so my, the, the idea of that is I want the, the two people to discuss how um, the MRC and um, emergency management uh, work, where they fit in, so people have a sort of a general sense of, in terms of FEMA, health departments, private providers, um, you know, where do these entities fit in, and if people are interested in volunteering, how do they volunteer, and what are there different kinds of things they can volunteer for, what are the different kinds of trainings that are offered, and, um, uh, you know, some, you know, stories about who, about activations and what has happened, and, as well as drills, um, so uh, people can get a better sense of what's out there and how do they access it, and in an emergency or disaster, how would these resources be activated? So how would people get, you know, the benefit of these resources that are out there? Um, whether it's as a business in terms of continuity of operations, as a health care provider, um, or um, as a community member, a parent, um, uh, et cetera. So I think it'll, it'll be a good discussion. I know both people quite well, um, have worked with them on a number of things, and they're both really, you know, dedicated and smart and interesting and extremely knowledgeable. So um, I think it'll be good. Thank you. Uh, did you mention a date yet? No date is set. I need to, uh, I, it took a while to get all the people in agreement that yes, this can happen. So now we need to come up with a date. Okay. Great, thanks. I'll look forward to that. Um, is there any other old business? Hearing and seeing none, um, I'm gonna move on to new business and I'm gonna sort of fold in eight and nine issues for 2012, 2013 under that. And this also ties in um, Marianne in, in many ways with uh, your representation uh, on uh, the ASK uh, committee uh, for us and, uh, and uh, Kevin Kane, this is a matter that uh, may involve you as well. Um, one of the things I did last week was I attended the uh, Delaware County Health Advisory Board meeting in uh, media. And um, one of the, there were several things, I reported on some of them, uh, the uh, drug take back, the uh, shingles vaccine, and the uh, wellness van, the Independence Blue Cross. But one of the more interesting items uh, from my point of view um, was the fact that the Delaware County Medical Society is in the process of launching a, an initiative in Delaware County um, involving uh, increasing health literacy on, on the part of um, citizens, uh, uh, residents of Delaware County. Um, and what, what they mean by health literacy is, um, and it's, for some of us it's, it's probably obvious, but uh, um, is, for example, being able to read the uh, the label on your prescription drug bottle and follow that uh, that label and comply with uh, the uh, drug regimen as prescribed by your your physician or source of health care um, being able to do other things um, that that ensure your your own uh, wellness and um, understanding uh, provisions in uh, that relate to your health insurance uh, and other things like that. Um, eating well, uh, seeing a physician on a regular basis, even when you're not sick, uh, for wellness visits. But my comment to uh, the representative from the Delaware County Medical Society, who's a member of the uh, Health Advisory Board is, um, and this ties into this transitioning to, to college, is that we have a whole population every year 
of young people who are seniors in high school who are going to be going off to college the very next year. And for the first times in their lives, they're going to be responsible for managing their own health and health care. Um, they will be, they won't be out of the minds of their parents, but they'll be out of their parents' sight, many of them, if they're going away to school. And um, anything that comes up and they'll, they'll have to be responsible and that will be a lifelong thing. And so I suggested that, um, that uh, perhaps working through the Delaware County Intermediate Unit um, or uh, directly with some of the high schools in, in our county, that the Delaware County Medical Society should look at um, including um, teenagers in developing a health literacy project, um, particularly targeted at uh, high school seniors. And I indicated that I was coming to this meeting tonight and that there is a representative of the Township School District as well as uh, our most recent board member uh, being uh, having a high level of expertise in, in health education. Um, that a lot of things tie together in my view and that perhaps it's a fruitful area that we could explore further with the Delaware County Medical Society and the uh, Health Advisory Board of Delaware County and this board and, and the school district, uh, in particular the high school, to look at what we could develop to enable um, our young people to make that transition uh, in such a way that we are, can be fairly certain or that they are able to manage their own health post high school graduation, uh, health and health care. Um, and so I'm just throwing that open as something that I think we should be looking at and working on. I think that's an excellent idea. Um, I do believe though from when as parents, it's our job from when they're kindergartners and brushing their teeth and washing their hands and and you move along and you change it when they're in middle school. And in health education classes, um, uh, you know, just up until last year, part of learning has, they have to be able to take that and have those conversations with their doctors. And you have to empower children with knowledge every day and, and be repetitive as opposed to the one blitz of giving. I think it's an excellent, way in this transition idea for the seniors going to high school. But I don't think that that would, is as effective as all of us in this community every day recognizing that the most important thing is the health of our children and it's an everyday thing for all of us, whether it's our children or I pass your children on the street and I see them doing something and I say something to them and they will tell you I do. but get them to the point by the time they leave your home that they're having discussions with their physicians. That's very important and that the physicians are listening to these young people. Um, but to have that as part of the transition at the end, I think that is excellent because that gives it more clout, if you will, because we don't always listen to our parents. Thank you. Yeah, and there are a whole range of things um, that, uh, for one reason or another, um, the message from parents may not either be given or received. And as you've just indicated from a uh, third party, sometimes it happens. Uh, but my thought is that there's some value in um, forming these kinds of partnerships to make sure that, that things happen. Um, so... What I, what I would like to do is to be able to follow up on. I guess I was curious, Dr. Foreman, if you have a particular perspective in terms of, I'm, I have no doubt that once kids get to the physician, that's like the good part, you know, I mean, if they actually get there. But what, what do you feel like are probably the holes where you feel like either kids don't think of 
you know, talking to their physician about something or um, even though, you know, you as a physician and physicians in general give a certain message, you feel like it needs to be reinforced other places. Do you have any particular thoughts? A hard one because there's a lot of issues, obviously, <clears throat> at that 15 to 20 minute well check. And sometimes you have to focus it around the parents' concerns or the kids' concern. Um, but I think that it's, it's hard to say what, if there's one area of need. Um, you know, it seems like the kids come in with their specific questions sometimes, and you sort of focus the exam toward that, those kind of things, whether it's, you know, bullying or, um, you know, other, other hygiene questions or something like that. But um, yeah, all information given to these kids, I think, you, is, is useful. And it seems like coming from a, as a father more than a doctor for the, with a fifth grader at this school district, you know, starting on that process of uh, reproduction is, you know, a really good start for the kids to sort of get a handle on their own health. And uh, it, it seems like it's done extremely professionally at the, uh, at the fifth grade level for their knowledge base. I think it's great. But I can't I have to think about what's the, really the needs for the community. It's, it's hard to know since everybody's so individual. Mr. Kane, do you have a comment? Uh, well, I'm looking at the course of uh, the high school uh, schedule, uh, their, their, their core sequence for health and PE. Uh, you know, they, they have a 10th grade as their last uh, health uh, credit that they receive. Uh, they have PE 11th and 12th grade. Uh, it's certainly a relationship could be formed uh, with the health and PE department at the high school or it could be explored. Uh, it would certainly be up to them uh, and the uh, supervisor of curriculum on, you know, whether how that would be developed. Let me propose then that I, I can f get back to the Delaware County Medical Society and see how they'd like to proceed and, and maybe we can put something together that to present to all the interested parties and look at uh, where that, that takes us. Okay. Any other new business items? Hearing none and seeing uh, no members of the public uh, before us this evening, um, the next meeting of this board is scheduled for Monday, April 15th at 5 o'clock p.m. here in the Radnor Shire Room of the Township Administration Building, and tonight's meeting stands adjourned. Thank you.